Warning, as one might expect, this video contains heavy spoilers for the ending of Final Fantasy X. Okay, so in case you don't know, while in the English version of Final Fantasy X, Yuna's parting words to Titus were I love you. In the original Japanese script, she actually said Arigato. Which means thank you. So why doesn't Yuna say I love you in Japanese? Here's the reason. You ready? Because she doesn't actually love Titus. I mean, how could she? She never even learned his name. <laughs> okay, no, seriously, there are multiple possible answers to this question, but perhaps the easiest one is to check the explanation that the localization team gave for the change. There's a Kotaku article that gave us an insight into that by sharing a snippet of a conversation with Alexander O. Smith, who helped translate Final Fantasy X. Smith recounts that there was an internal debate about Yuna's final words to Titus and explains why they changed the original Arigato to I love you in English. And yet, said Smith, Arigato has connotations that go beyond the phrasebook definition of thanks. Literally meaning, there was much difficulty. The word encompasses a sense of shared experience. If the patriarch of a family was on his deathbed, looking up at his children and grandchildren, the word he might say in Japanese is arigato. It has the weight, and finality in this case, that we associate with the words I love you in English. I'll come back to this explanation later, but suffice it to say, this translation choice was very well received, and probably justified, because from what I've seen, when Western players learn that Yuna doesn't tell Titus that she loves him in the original Japanese, but instead thanks him, they usually find that underwhelming. Perhaps to our Western sensibilities, a thank you seems too simple or bland, and the mere expression of gratitude doesn't seem strong enough for such an emotional scene and for Titus' reaction to Yuna's words. Personally though, I do think the Japanese line is strong enough, so I decided to make this video to explain why I feel that way. Now rest assured that my intent is not to put down the official translation. I can totally understand why they made that choice, and like I said, it may very well have been the best and most effective choice for an English-speaking audience. But still, even if you love the I love you, I'd like it if you liked the thank you as well. So allow me to share with you the reasons why I think the Japanese line is more than powerful enough and actually fits the scene and Yuna and Titus' story quite well. These reasons can be divided into two different types, cultural reasons and storytelling reasons. So let's start with the cultural aspect. So why does Yuna say thank you in Japanese? Well, to be precise, she doesn't, she says arigato, which is the Japanese equivalent of thank you, but as Alexander O. Smith himself said, arigato has deeper connotations that make it perhaps a more impactful word in Japanese than a thank you might be in English. This was actually one of the first things my Japanese teacher in college, Koseki Sensei, taught me. See, even though arigato is usually written in hiragana, which is a purely phonetic lettering system, it can also be written in kanji, which are originally Chinese characters that represent certain ideas or concepts. So, if we look at the kanji that make up arigato, we can glean what the word might be intended to mean. So here are the two kanji that comprise it. The first kanji, which is the ari part, possesses the meaning of to exist, or to happen, or to have. The second kanji, the gato part, is the kanji for difficult, or trouble, or hardship. And so my teacher, good old Koseki Sensei, provided the following explanation to our class. Arigato means that it is difficult to exist, so thank you. Now, he was a nice teacher, but he wasn't always great at explaining things in detail, so he never really elaborated beyond that. But after doing further research on this topic, from what I've seen, there's at least two ways in which we can understand this meaning of it's difficult to exist. One, you thank someone because they did an act of kindness towards you and that can sadly be considered rare. Rare as in difficult to exist or to find. So it's an indirect form of expressing gratitude where you're literally acknowledging the rarity of the favor that someone just did for you. Or it could also have the connotation that existence itself is difficult. You know, living can be hard. It's a tough world out there with a lot of potential hardship in it. And yet, in such a world, with so many difficulties that we all share, you still went out of your way to do something for me. So thank you. So these kinds of meanings are imbued into arigato, and that's why the word carries so much weight in Japanese. 
But it's not just the depth of its meaning. There's another important cultural factor at play that can also help explain why Yuna doesn't say I love you in Japanese. As I alluded to in my Final Fantasy IX translation analysis series, the Japanese tend to value actions more than words, so they're known for being rather indirect in their verbal communication. Instead, they often rely on what we would call reading the air in English, meaning they pay more attention to non-verbal communication through things like body language and whatnot. So, with that in mind, we could even say that, from a Japanese perspective, Yuna wouldn't really need to confess her love to Titus at that point because she had already shown it in a very non-verbal and body language way. But this doesn't mean that verbal expressions of love and affection don't exist in Japanese. They do. They could have had Yuna say Daisuki or Aishiteiru, which are possible equivalents of I love you in Japanese. And yet, they chose not to, so clearly they considered arigato, a deep expression of gratitude, a more fitting and powerful option than those. So, with that in mind, here's my take on why that might be the case from a storytelling perspective. So, I've just described the weight of the word arigato, thus emphasizing how it may be a bit more impactful than a thank you would be in English. But that doesn't mean that I believe thank you would have been a weak or unfitting line for the English version. Like I said, I understand and respect the choice of the translators and clearly it worked well considering how many Western players still love that moment, myself included. Like most Final Fantasy fans, that scene moved me to tears before I ever learned about the change in dialogue. So again, clearly I love you works. But is an expression of gratitude like arigato or thank you any less fitting and appropriate? Or even less powerful and profound? Well, you can decide that for yourself, and my intent is not to convert you into preferring the Japanese version, I just like to convey why I feel the Japanese line is actually a rather powerful choice of words that fits the scene and the larger story of Yuna and Titus quite well. In the aforementioned interview with Alexander o. Smith, he talked about how a grandfather might say arigato to his children and grandchildren on his deathbed, since the word possesses, and I quote, the weight and the finality in this case that we associate with the words I love you in English. Now, I can understand the weight of an I love you, but when it comes to the finality in the context in which the line is said in Final Fantasy X, I would argue that an expression of gratitude actually provides a greater sense of finality and more importantly closure than a confession of love. So let's look at the circumstances in which the line was said. Titus was leaving. As far as Yuna knew, she would never see him again, and so, unable to simply watch him leave, the usually self-restrained and composed Yuna ends up frantically dashing towards him in an attempt to embrace and hold on to him. But as understandable and as poignant as this action might be, after falling down, Yuna seems to realize fairly quickly that it was actually a misguided impulse, and therefore, just as quickly, she adjusts her behavior appropriately. Why was it misguided, you ask? Well, for one, because desperately clinging to a soul that must depart isn't going to do said soul any favors. And similarly, a confession of love isn't necessarily going to make the act of parting any easier, as it kind of emphasizes passions and attachments that Titus needs to let go of in order to be able to depart with some degree of peace and acceptance within himself, which is especially important in the world of Final Fantasy X. See, despite his attempt to put on a brave front and enact a casual goodbye, Titus was actually in a state of deep emotional turmoil, which is actually even more apparent in Japanese, where his weeping is much more noticeable and sorrowful. Just listen to the difference between each version. See what I mean? The depth of Titus' grief is even clearer in Japanese, so with that in mind, let's call back to Lulu's explanation about the need for sending the dead. Oh, couldn't this be what Titus was going through? 
I mean, his grief is made readily apparent by his audible weeping, so it seems reasonable to assume that he may indeed have been struggling to truly accept and face his fate now that the moment of reckoning was right in front of him. So what Yuna needed to do there was to help him find the acceptance and the sense of closure that would help him face that fate. And again, with that end in mind, a passionate confession of love might actually be somewhat counterproductive, since it kind of evokes a sense of longing and clinging which could make Titus feel even more regretful and unfulfilled. Remember, Titus' own choice of parting words to Yuna consisted of an apology. I'm sorry I couldn't show you Xanarchy. This shows us that Titus is actually somewhat tormented by lingering regrets. And as Lulu goes on to say in the remainder of her aforementioned speech, the dead yearn to go on living. And if they're unable to move on and their souls remain in Spira, they can become fiends and prey upon the living. So Titus is facing a rather crucial moment with the fate of his soul hanging in the balance. His time to depart has come, but he's full of grief and regret, and at the end of it all, he even feels like he's failed Yuna. And that's precisely why Yuna's words of gratitude save him, and why his reaction to them is as strong as it is. With her words of gratitude, Yuna lets Titus know how she truly feels about everything he did for her, and lets him know that his company and support did help her immensely. The whole game, Titus wanted to save Yuna from her seemingly inevitable sacrificial death, and he did, but he actually saved her in a deeper way as well, by touching her heart and encouraging her to live more freely without being weighed down by social expectations and pressure and by showing her love and cheer in a journey that might have otherwise been filled with sorrow and gloom. And so Yuna makes sure to let Titus know how much that meant to her with her last words to him. Arigato, or thank you, gives Titus the closure he needed and helps dispel his lingering regrets so that he might depart in relative peace. So his reaction to Yuna's Japanese line is actually quite appropriate and understandable, he can see the depth of Yuna's feelings of gratitude towards him, as well as her acceptance of the end of their time together, and this, in turn, helps him accept it, as well as his own fate, without feeling like he wasn't good enough. But that's not all. I would also suggest that Arigato was the wisest thing Yuna could have said in that moment, not just for Titus's sake, but also for her own sake and for the sake of her long-standing wish to be a ray of light and symbol of hope to the people of Spira. As Yuna herself said, she lives for the people of Spira. And that's why she couldn't allow herself to collapse in such a way that she might never recover, because she can't afford to lose her smile and the hope it inspires in everyone. And thus, even amidst a deeply painful personal loss, Yuna gathers all her inner strength in order to accept Titus's departure without it permanently darkening her heart and making her unable to continue to spread light to the people of Spira. It's not an easy thing to do, which is why she can't even bear to look at him, but she does it anyway because that's what will do the most good to everyone, and that is what Yuna always strives to do, even when it might be the most difficult thing to do. So, Thank You is actually very much in line with Yuna's character, whose most defining characteristic is her unbreakable force of will. As the leader of the Ronzo says, Yuna's will is stronger than steel. Steel is indeed a very appropriate word because Yuna is constantly stealing herself to do what is needed most for the well-being of others and the world at large, sometimes even at the expense of her own inclinations and urges. And that's exactly what she does in the ending during her parting with Titus. She initially succumbs to the urge to try and hold on to him, but then she collects herself, accepts the situation and expresses her deep feelings of gratitude because that's what will help both Titus and Yuna herself to move on and do what they must. Now, with all that being said, as I mentioned before, I still understand why they went with I love you, and I'm sure many English speakers were more impacted by it than they would have been by a thank you. I can't help but wonder though, if they thought a simple thank you wasn't strong enough in English, perhaps they could have had her say, for example, thank you for everything. I don't know, with a strong enough performance and delivery, I think that might have worked. It might have been a tight fit for the lip movements, but still. Oh well, who knows, just thinking out loud. Anyway, to sum it up, 
In my personal opinion, which you're free to disagree with, an expression of gratitude was actually more appropriate for the circumstances than a confession of love, essentially because the words I love you kind of reinforce clinging, which could make the parting more difficult, whereas thank you reinforces closure, which is what both of them needed at that moment. Titus, so he could accept his fate and depart peacefully, and Yuna, so she wouldn't be irreparably broken by their separation, as she needed to continue to act as Spira's ray of light. As we see in the epilogue, where she gives that beautiful speech to the people of Spira, while still honoring the memory of her beloved, and making sure it is never forgotten. Well, there you have it. Now, even after all that, you might still be glad they changed the line to I love you and prefer that version, and again, that's totally fine. Like I said, I wasn't trying to change your preferences, I just wanted to try and explain why I think the original Japanese line, which might seem underwhelming to Western players at first glance, does possess the emotional weight the scene is meant to have, and actually fits the story of Yuna and Titus quite well. Anyway, arigato for watching the video to the end, and if you enjoyed it, then you might want to check out my translation analysis series on Final Fantasy IX, where I go over the entire game and comment on all sorts of interesting changes and differences between its English and Japanese scripts. So check that out if you're interested, and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you'd like to see more fun Final Fantasy content. Alright, that's all for now. Hope y'all enjoyed this focused Final Fantasy X translation analysis, and I'll see you next time, Chocobros!